Hi everyone, welcome to today's video and welcome to my channel. Uh, for those who are new to the channel and don't know me, my name is Andrew Balcom. I'm an Australian photographer and videographer and I'm based in the Netherlands. I've been uh, in the Netherlands for almost, a, well, more than a decade now. Uh, and I have a video channel or a YouTube channel that is based on videography and uh, photography. I make a lot of videos about my uh, life as a stock photographer and my ups and downs dealing with uh, the stock photography market. Uh, every month I make an earnings report about how much uh, money I've made and my best sellers. And I also make a lot of videos about wildlife and nature and uh, the cameras and lenses and equipment that I use for my quest. And I've just been branching off lately and doing other things with uh, photography such as time lapses and some product reviews. So feel free to stick around and uh, every week I come out with a new video. Okay, today's video is a big one. Uh, I'm combining my uh, monthly earnings report for June if, of 2020 and I'm also combining that with uh, my four years as a stock photographer and what that means to me in terms of earnings, uh, the problems that I've had, the successes that I've had, um, what I'm going through now uh, currently in the stock photography and micro stock market and what my plans are for the future. So this video will comprise of four parts. The first part will be discussing my portfolio, uh, how many photos and videos I have, uh, and what, what characteristics my portfolio takes, uh, whether how much of it's editorial, how much of it's conceptual, and uh, how that uh, shapes uh, the situation uh, that I find myself in June. Uh, secondly, I'll be talking about comparing my June earnings of this month, uh, June uh, 2020, compared to my earnings in June 2019. Just to give you an idea of where the stock uh, photography and videography market is for me right now. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about how much money I've made over uh, the time that I've been doing stock photography and videography, which is four years and three months. Um, I started uh, back in 2016 in March, and uh, it's well over four years now, so it will give you a good idea um, of maybe uh, where you might stand in uh, either four years' time or two years' time, depending on how many uh, photos and videos you've uploaded and also the quality of your portfolio. And lastly, I'll be talking about the future and um, the impact of the Shutterstock uh, situation, um, also uh, the uh, crisis we find ourselves in at the moment. And I'll be talking about my strategies about what I will be doing to mitigate uh, future risk and also minimalize uh, any loss of earnings in the future. So uh, let's get started and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. It's going to be a good one. Okay, let's uh, talk about my portfolio now. I have uh, 2100 images uh, spread across a number of different agencies and I have around 99 videos and those videos are spread uh, mostly around four agencies and those agencies are Adobe Stock, iStock Getty Images, Shutterstock and Pond5. Uh, the images that I upload uh, to the stock agencies, uh, they are to the following stock agencies and that is Alamy, 
Dreams Time, iStock Getty Images, Adobe Stock, Big Stock, 123RF, Deposit Photos, IEM, Pond5, and Shutterstock. I generally upload uh, once a week and um, the amount of photos I upload uh, at that time, it's usually on my one day off when I'm not working, uh, I upload around 20 to 30 images. Now up until a few months ago when I've regularly started uploading videos to YouTube, uh, that was the case. Uh, but since I've been really a lot more busier with uh, sharing my knowledge and experiences with you guys, uh, I would say that I upload once every two weeks now and sometimes even less if I'm really busy at work and also busy making these uh, videos. So over the last four months I would say my rate of uploading has dropped significantly. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you how much I earned over the month of June for the year of 2020. And after I've done that, I'm going to compare it to how much I earned uh, for the month of June for the year 2019. Uh, before I get into my June earnings, I just encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Um, I think my videos are pretty helpful if you're getting into uh, micro stock videography and photography. And also if you're just into uh, photography and videography in general, as I do uh, also a lot of uh, tutorial videos which can uh, be interesting or helpful. If you have subscribed, uh, also just a reminder to hit the bell notification so you know when my weekly videos come up. Uh, sometimes they don't always fall on the same day of the week, so if you have that notification bell, uh, you'll definitely know when my new video is up. Okay, now let's go through the agencies and how much they earn for me in June. And we'll start with Alamy. And for Alamy, I didn't earn any money uh, for the month of June. Uh, Adobe stock, I earned $12.26. Uh, the agency IEM earned me zero this month. Uh, Pond5 I earned $15.18. Dreams Time I earned $2.36. Deposit Photos I earned $1.80. 123RF earned $2.72 for me. Uh, Shutterstock earned me $27.64. And Big Stock earned me one dollar. Uh, the total amount of money that I earned for the month of June in 2020 was $63.96. Now in comparison to June of last year in 2019, um, I can already see quite a big difference. Uh, Alamy earned me $3.21. Pond5 earned me $20. Dreams Time earned me $5.35. Uh, Deposit Photos earned me $3.94. 123RF earned me $4.30. And Shutterstock earned me $94.26. And the total that I earned for June in 2019 was $150.43. So that's a drop in revenue of about just under two thirds which is pretty significant. And there's a number of factors involved between uh, why last year's earnings were higher than this year's earnings. And firstly, uh, the responsibility lies with me. Uh, the amount of photos and videos I uploaded uh, this year is a lot less than compared to what I uploaded last year. And that is just because of the uh, circumstances with producing content for YouTube and also working four days a week and having a family life. So there is that factor. Also, uh, when you upload fewer videos and uh, photos, the amount of content that the customers uh, download from your portfolio also reduces a bit. Um, another factor is uh, the crisis over the last uh, three or four months. Um, it has had an impact on my portfolio. 
I think my portfolio is mainly made up of editorial photos, not so much news editorial photos, but more everyday life photos and kind of stuff like uh, things you come across in everyday li life, such as uh, walking across a building that is having asbestos removed. So it's not the glamorous kind of uh, content that some lifestyle uh, contributors will uh, upload. It's more uh, random and everyday. I also have a lot of travel uh, photos, uh, especially in, for the Netherlands and European countries and parts of Australia. So travel has obviously been hit uh, as has the travel industry. And uh, another factor is the massive drop in Shutterstock commissions. Um, and uh, for the month of June, I also deactivated my Shutterstock account uh, in support of um, the contributors who are having up to half or more of their income uh, chopped off because of the new commission rates uh, that have been introduced by Shutterstock. So it's been a perfect storm uh, in June and uh, May and April and also a bit of March. So they're the factors that have uh, hit the last few months. So it's understandable why the comparison between last year and this year is so drastic. Okay, so now the big question. After over four years of uploading to microstock agencies, photography and videography, how much money have I earned? Well, first of all, I'm going to go through the agencies and rank them from one to 10 on their performance. Uh, so which agencies have performed the best for me and earned me the most money over those four, and four years and three months. So heartbreakingly enough, uh, the number one earner uh, is Shutterstock and Shutterstock earned me more than half of my income over the last four years that I've been uploading to the stock agencies. So I say it's heartbreaking because uh, it's also going to be taking a big hit and has taken a big hit. So for me, that means that my earnings uh, can reduce by maybe a third, I wouldn't say a half, but a significant amount in the coming uh, months and years. Okay, so the second agency that's earned the most for me is Alamy. Uh, the third is Adobe Stock. Fourth is iStock Getty. Fifth is Pond5. Sixth is Dreamtime. Seventh is IEM. Eighth is Big Stock. Ninth is 123RF. And tenth is Deposit Photos. And over the last four years and three months, I've earned $6,517. And very roughly, I haven't, I haven't uh, calculated to the exact amount, but roughly it's about $1,600 uh, a year. Um, in the last year, I've uh, made a lot more money than in the previous uh, three years simply because I uploaded a uh, video and uh, one of my videos that has earned me hundreds and hundreds of dollars is a nature video of um, a seabird that's been wrapped up in a fishing net and uh, that's uh, really made a difference to the overall total that I've earned uh, from Microstock. And what have I used the money for over this last four years? Uh, how have I used that to improve my life and the life of my family? Well, firstly, I've uh, invested in my kitchen. Well, if you've seen the first video that I made about how much I've earned uh, in Microstock uh, for the first three years, you'll know that I invested into a new dishwasher, a new fridge and a new oven. Uh, and that, that made a huge difference actually to uh, the quality of life of my family. 
uh, we had a functioning kitchen again and uh, that was really helpful. Um, I also uh, and this one here I also invested in my business by uh, recently buying uh, this Canon EF uh, prime lens 400 millimeter that's an L lens and uh, this lens cost me 900 uh, euros second hand if you want to know more I've made a video about this uh, so if you want to know more about the lens and what I use it for and how it performs in the field then uh, I'll put a link up here in the video and uh, you can see all about that Another uh, investment I made was for, oh, it blends into my t-shirt, I'll put it out this way a bit, is uh, my little Panasonic video camera. And I've used this uh, for making my YouTube videos and also uh, every now and then I use the footage to uh, create stock uh, videography. I've also used uh, the earnings that I've made over the previous years uh, for weekends away for myself and my partner and my uh, family and also for unexpected costs like car repairs or bills that come in that we didn't expect we'd have to pay. So uh, Microstock has uh, been both a source of fun and purpose for me over the years. This is I've uh, been living in a foreign country and it's given me uh, a reason to get out of the house and be creative and make things and also be able to put my work onto a, a public uh, forum and license that out to people who need it. Um, I wouldn't say that my photography and videography is art. Um, I would say it's uh, news, uh, it's product, uh, and it's conceptual uh, images and videos uh, that people need to enhance their businesses. Yeah, so licensing uh, my work out uh, at uh, 25, 36 cents a shot uh, it's not an emotional uh, betrayal to me. Um, I know I'm only licensing it out and I'm licensing it out in some cases hundreds of times. I still have the product. Uh, I own the copyright for it, so that's fine. Also, the beauty of uh, Microstock means that I don't have to constantly talk to a customer about uh, what they want, what their needs are, and having to satisfy those needs. Um, so it's low impact to me. Uh, the only effort I have to put in is taking the photos and videos, uploading them, and then I'm free. Uh, someone else does the work. So yeah, that was the story for the last four years. And uh, have things changed now? Uh, over the last three or four months. Is, do I feel the same way still um, regarding how much I earn? Like uh, for one agency, we won't name, uh, instead of getting a 36 cent subscription for licensing my work, I'm only getting a 10 or 11 cent subscription for licensing that work. What does that mean to me now? How am I going to move forward? Okay, so in summary uh, about my results, um, the video sales have boosted my earnings over the last 12 months. Um, I also realize I've had an over-reliance on Shutterstock with my earnings being more than half of the total earnings from Shutterstock. There's been a drastic overall drop since March 2020 in my earnings across the board uh, for Microstock. Um, Shutterstock will be relegated now in earnings potential to the same level that uh, Adobe is or iStock Getty Images for me. And I've had roughly a two-thirds drop in income 
in comparison to June 2019. Okay, so what does the future hold for me? Will I continue with uh, Shutterstock? And the answer is yes, I'm going to continue with Shutterstock. Uh, despite uh, deactivating my portfolio for a week, uh, I have reactivated it and I've started earning income again on that uh, agency. Uh, and I'm going to keep you guys posted about how that goes every month. Uh, the contributors who have large portfolios are going to be able to climb the ranks faster especially when that restart comes in January where everyone's uh, where everyone is uh, put down to level one and uh, then their earnings will determine what level they go to and that level will determine how much of a commission they make. So the small portfolios are going to rise through those commission levels a lot slower uh, so it's going to be a lot harder for them. Um, previously, uh, people have been able to build up their portfolios uh, and every level that they hit, they get a bigger reward. Uh, but now the disadvantage is, of course, after every 12 months, you hit a certain level, then you go back down again. So you're starting from scratch. And that's going to hit me and a lot of smaller uh, uh, contributors uh, quite hard. So um, I will be reevaluating again come uh, January, February of next year. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be broadening my portfolio. I'm going to be creating more videos because that's where the growth is in Microstock. Um, it probably hasn't fully reached the plateau yet that uh, photos have. Uh, there still is room for growth, even though uh, for Shutterstock, uh, the commission rates will be going down or have gone down. I think I was on level uh, three for video and now I've been put back to level two. So already I've taken a hit. Um, I'm going to be increasing my fine art uh, uploads to the fine art uh, agencies. Uh, they have bigger commission rates. And I think for Fine Art America, I'm also going to make an investment, and that is pay for a membership for 12 months so that, that I can upload an endless amount of images to that agency. At the moment, I'm not paying anything for Fine Art America and I'm only allowed to upload uh, a handful of photos, maybe 20 or 30, uh, and maybe rotate those around. And I think over the last three years uh, for that agency, I've only sold maybe two or three photos. So I'm going to make an investment there and also Society6. Uh, I'm going to be doing more lifestyle shoots because I believe that is also a growth area that hasn't been uh, accessed by a lot of stock photographers who go for the easier to organize shots such as editor editorial, which is what I do, and uh, commercial photos that don't involve people. Uh, so I'll be doing more of that. And of course, I'm going to be doing more uploading of videos and photos uh, in comparison. How I'm going to do that and make a, a YouTube channel, I don't know, but uh, I'm going, I've committed to the idea that I will be doing that uh, because I want to give myself a clear concept of, okay, I've worked as hard as I can for these last six months of 2020 and is that enough to sustain me? Uh, so that will be a, a good sort of litmus test to see if Microstock is actually worth doing in the year 2021. If I upload now as June 2020 all the way to next January 2021 and I've done everything I can to make uh, my portfolio successful and it is successful, then I'll know it's doable. Follow along with me and you'll find out as well 
at the same time as me whether the microstock industry is sustainable or not for a portfolio of my size. Uh, by 2021, my portfolio will probably have increased from 2100 images to hopefully 27 to 3000 images. And I'm hoping to have at least 500 videos. Uh, so let's see if that makes a difference to uh, my passive income. Okay, well that's it for today. I hope uh, that you found this uh, interesting and it helped you guys to maybe compare yourself to me uh, with your journey of microstock, uh, where you've come from, uh, what you've achieved so far and where you're going. And uh, I just hope uh, you'll follow along on my journey to see how these massive changes have affected me and whether I'll be successful in overcoming these difficulties and forging uh, a bright future for my uh, passive income. Okay guys, if you found it helpful, give this video a like and I look forward to seeing you next week. All the best.